Each week, we break down a hot topic in the gaming industry. Today, we talk about how Austin is crying right now. Austin, are you sad about something? What are you sad about? Is it Borderlands? Is it Epic Games? Or is it that you think you might actually get back into Destiny? <sighs> it's all of them. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> all of them. Uh, well, that's 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 oh, the, the latter of which is our topic of conversation today, everybody. We are going to talk about is it worth returning to Destiny in year three? Um, I can't believe we're having this discussion, <laughs> but Austin, you know, it wasn't too long ago we were like, I can't believe we're talking about this. Wow, classic. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah all these game. things are emerging like that game. once again. There's a lot of things that have happened. We addressed this previously on the podcast where uh, Destiny had split with Activision. Bungie specifically had split with Activision. And with that came a fresh new look on the future of Destiny. And coming up here in a couple of weeks, we have... Um, October Des- 1st. October 1st, we have Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, which is their next expansion. And there's also been a lot of structural changes within destiny in that on that day, you're going to get a uh, destiny to a new light, which is their free to play version of destiny Two. So <clears throat> people that have never gone into destiny before can now jump into destiny at no cost and play it. early content builds, except for forsaken and shadow keep, which are the two expansions that are most. I thought it was just, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah. right. My bad. So yeah. those are the availability uh, available items to play. And That's actually it, quite a bit of content. Yeah, it's a ton of content. For free. <laughs> yeah, because we paid $60 for that shit. Yes. You know? I paid for it twice. Yeah, I also Why paid for did it twice because he did it because before I Activision wanted to split. Play it on PC and then never did. And now, soon, you're going to be able to take your cross save from any console and then move it into your game of your platform of choice. The idea behind this is that is it worth jumping into Destiny? Because they've announced a lot of new things. They've announced a new plan going forward where they have admitted that this is now, and this apparently Activision was like, no, you can't call this an MMO for whatever reason. They are now dubbing this Destiny as an MMO. That's what it is. It is what it is. That's what you got. Every single year, there's going to be a new expansion pack that's going to come out. That's going to be a big kind of kind of a pillar of what's to come in destiny. And then from there, they're going to have four mini releases during that season of content that is going to add additional stuff to the game. And that's going to happen for the next till the end of life. They apparently have it planned out to like, I think they said what year eight or something or year something like that. So the season of them dying goes from October 1st, all the way up to December. So it looks like they're having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different things they're going to be dropping within that time. Um, but for this, I think it's interesting. It could be interesting, even though I still have an issue with it, is that it might help extend the life and allow them to make corrections like they said in the video we watched, the video doc, over time to make the game better for everybody. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is that, I mean... The idea of them dropping it all at once could work. However, you got people that are going to be like me that take a while to get through content. And you're going to have people that are like the dude that finished World of Warcraft in three days <laughs> yeah. and are going to power through it. Right. So by spacing it out, it allows everybody the chance to kind of stay at the same general level. And like they can go to a certain point, but those guys are so hardcore, they're just going to keep grinding away to get more loot and more things while the other players can catch up and then new content will drop and then everybody's all playing that same that content at the same time. Right. Um, so if you like fall a little bit behind, you can kind of, you have less catching up to do what, to play with your friends if you may not have been playing as regularly as they have. Right. So right. I think that's one of the big benefits of them doing it like this. Plus it just keeps their, their game, since it is a live service game, one of the things... One of the requirements of it maintaining its live service status is to stay in the eyes of people that are playing the game um, and then stay in the media. And that's where I think Anthem really, really fell short is that they dropped that game and then they kind of went dark for like three months because it got received so poorly at the beginning and you never heard anything about it. Destiny didn't do that. They were real quick to come out with like, hey, there's like Destiny 1 even that didn't get received super well. They did have additional content drops that came out like within three months, they had a new expansion pack or a new like update, which wasn't a great update. But then they were like, don't worry, there's more coming out. And now they got this kind of rhythm going where 
there's going to be constantly something new to keep coming back to it. Kind of like Sea of Thieves has done, which, you know, can be argued both directions of whether it's good or not. But they're doing monthly content drops now so that you may play for a little bit with your friends and then you kind of drop out of it. But then there's something new that comes out. It's like, oh, I want to jump in and get a pet or get this new gear like thing or play this raid or whatever. Right, right. And it, it keeps them kind of in the public eye more frequently. I think is is smart. I think it's a good move for a live server for an MMO, and I, I like the new the new model because you pay a little bit every time, and then that's going to last you for a year. If you're not dropping sixty bucks, you don't have to drop sixty bucks. It's like thirty five dollars, and you're getting a new version of it, and then you get a shit ton of new content that comes with it, and then throughout the year you're getting more and more stuff that comes with it. Right. And I couldn't help. So we watched a, a video doc as we we're preparing to talk about this, and I couldn't help but see myself comparing this to Borderlands. And I was like, man, like things that Destiny did right is the world building is incredible. Like I think that even though they do reuse some assets and reuse some air environments, stuff like that, their worlds are really, really awesome looking. Visually just epic. And I think their skins, like they've done a good, they've fallen, gone down the right path of like, you know, originally we had some hate on Guardians and like, okay, they're just kind of like unmasked or masked characters that you never see their face or anything like that, don't have an identity. But now it's like, man, there's some really badass skins that you can get and badass weapons. And like, there's so many weapons and so many skins and so many configurations you can do and so much flexibility with that configuration that I'm like, this is kind of a model that could have influenced Borderlands a little bit. So when I look at it, it's it's really the guns. Yeah, there's a lot of the same guns and different variations of the, uh, of a gun that you might get, but there's those certain guns that are the you know the one of its kind type thing. Right. Like, yeah, everyone might get it eventually. We have to grind for it, right, to get that drop. But when you get that gun, like you know that gun's badass and it does a certain thing the way it should. While in Borderlands Three you're going to get 50 different variations for one type of gun that do different things for different situations. And it's like, do I want to keep up with that? Yeah. And like, I don't. Like, I want to keep 10 versions of this gun. I want to be able, I mean, again, you know, with Bungie, like you have a gun that you know does really, really well, but then you get a new gun that has this little piece to it. That's like, that's badass. Yeah. You can infuse that into your gun that you have that, you right. know, is like your favorite gun. Right. And you can kind of like mix and match a little bit. And right. you were talking about attachments earlier. And like that could be, I mean, like the new Modern Warfare has that system built into it where they have the gunsmith where you have a set number of weapons that you can choose from, but then the weapon combinations that are available to you through attachments and stuff are immensely large. <sighs> yeah. So Do I want to play it again. Yeah, I know. So that's Destiny does gameplay right. When you're playing the Guardians, yeah, there's not a lot of customization to their faces, and they don't. There's a lot of story aspects to them that just don't pan out or mesh together well with the overarching story and world that you're living in. But when it comes to their abilities and powers, and the weapons and gunplay and combat, like that stuff is just spot on. It was spot on in Destiny One. It's spot on in Destiny Two. I mean, that one video we watched a video from Bellular Gaming. Um, so they were they were talking a lot about um, their relationship with Activision and how Activision influenced um, the upfront pricing structure that was like, here's all these different tiers and things that you should buy. And then later on, let's add all these loot boxes and things of that nature to further it. And you saw that with Call of Duty Black, Black Ops 4 in that you had all these different additions you could purchase at the beginning. And then later on, after you got comfortable with the game and played it, they were like, let's just throw a shit ton of loot boxes and cosmetic and upgrades to a game you paid 60 bucks for. And that was kind of frustrating. And then so Bungie's now looking at it, now that they're detached, let's make it free to play and you buy content updates, which is what I've always wanted to see happen is that you know you you have the game, you can always play that game at no cost, but if you want more stuff to access, like... I don't want to have to pay these little prices. Like I will pay for new stuff as long as it's priced right and has a lot of content to it. Exactly. Kind of like I mean, like DLC. Like I love DLC when it's good DLC. Right. Right. Um, and not just like re remastered, remixed, whatever. Which I mean, this is going to be a little remix because there are going to be Back to the Moon and stuff yeah. like that. I, th I feel like Shadow keeps cool. the last of that. At least I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. They said that all of their content from now on is going to tie into each other. At least the seasons. So right. 
We're going to have three more seasons after this, I believe. Probably leading up till the end of the year. At least. At least. <clears throat> so that's very exciting. I mean, this is all very exciting. We're, it's a new start, but at the same time, it could not pan out well. You know, we really won't know till the end of the year at 2020 mm-hmm. whether this new move for Bungie is going to pay off for the gamers. Yeah. I think they said four seasons per expansion. Okay. So this will be starting in oh, October. Okay. And this will be the season that takes us to the end of the year. And then gotcha. there'll be three more. And then next October-ish, we'll have a new expansion gotcha. that drops. A new That's season. a new introduction of right. seasons and stuff like that. That's perfect. Because then you get people... Like, you already have a game plan. And by the time you get to October, you're, you've already worked on the next season. I would assume. I hope so. So, like, everything's panning out. And you're able to course correct as, as you go. And, I mean, yeah. I feel like... I feel like that's what these games as a service is meant to be doing. And it's not... They're going out and just being like, well, here's a half ass game. Obviously, Destiny is a different story. And you know, for the most part, it, it, it started off pretty good, you know, and they're able to improve it over time. So, yeah, technically, it's had its mm-hmm. moment where it caught up to itself, you know. Yeah. Destiny 2 started out pretty good. Destiny 1 was, eh. yeah, no, that was Taken just King complete. was good. But, um, yeah, Destiny 2, I think, is where it like, figured out what it was meant to be right. which is probably why they did rename it to destiny 2 and put a 2 attached to it because they want to kind of have a new birth but now we have like a brand new i, I know i feel like they should almost like call it destiny 3 <laughs> just just go, yeah just i don't know just go back to destiny and just be like forget right. that destiny 1 ever existed and like this is destiny now and then just destiny colon right. this and then right you go online you buy destiny and then you purchase these content packs. Well, we just need to pull uh, Avengers Endgame and go back in time and start over and have a really <laughs> awesome everything at that point. Yeah, yes, so. we definitely do. They've they've done good work with this. Like they they're kind of a success story in the sense of, I mean, not as big of a leap back as No Man's Sky, but they're definitely a pretty heavy leap back. They've kept players coming back. Yeah, and there's people that I follow. Like when I was listening to like kind of funny games or whatever, like Fran Mirabella and Andrew Renee. Like they are daily Destiny players, like daily grinders, and that's amidst their day job and then playing other games. Wow. Like they log in every day for their bounties, do their all that stuff. That's like impressive. They're in it, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are that. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. this is their game. And right, they, they run through it and just like they play it all the time. Um, and I'm sure it's a huge audience, so they're yeah. supporting that, but they're also supporting more and more, and more people coming into it in the future. So. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I mean, I, I'm hoping for the best because again, they have good, great gameplay, great combat, great gunplay. So, you know, just bring it home, guys. And honestly, I think their their stories have gotten better. I mean, they're not amazing, right? But I really want to pick up those grimoire books that they those anthologies mm-hmm. that they brought out mm-hmm. just to read through it and see. See if it kind of like brings all the stuff together and connects the dots that are right. broken right now. Right, right. Um, I like that they did that and like released an anthology of here's the story of Destiny, the world of Destiny that you right. need to know and be aware of. <laughs> that you didn't know about in the game, but yeah, yeah originally, but now you do. <laughs> Supplements. So uh yeah. No, I'm I'm curious to know what everybody else thinks. Like, are you going to get this, Austin? Like, are you like whenever October first launches. Yes. Season I, yeah, I've already made a mind. At, at the very least, I'm going to transfer all my stuff over and play through it. Because, well, yeah, I would have already played through it. I'm probably going to have to play through it again because I don't remember anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, or know how to play it. So, yeah, I mean, I love the Crucible, so you know, I'm going to do a lot of that, and um, I'll probably get Shadow Keep mm-hmm. just to say, just to try it out, so we can review it. You know, right. at the very least, I can be like, don't buy it, you know, or like, uh, you know, it's okay. It's for some people. Some people, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say. But I'm curious. I mean, it's yeah. making me super curious what's going to happen now. Holy shit. There you have it, folks. Yeah. Bungie has got <laughs> us convinced to jump back into Destiny. Dang it. Why is this happening? We should support people who leave big companies like Activision. So that's another reason. Sure. That's all I'm saying. Fair. Fair. Yeah. yeah that's yep. true. Um, so, yeah. I want to know, are you all going to jump back into Destiny for year three? Are you going to jump into Shadow of the Undying? Um, do you want to join our clan? Not Shadow of the Undying, Season of the Undying. Yeah, you know, join our clan, play with us, do all the things. Our clan still exists somewhere. I wonder if you can transfer the clan too. I'm sure. I don't know. Probably I hope so. That would be that would be bad. Well, I, I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to just make. I it guess we just make it up yeah. again. But well, I mean, if you're on well, PlayStation, have, but 4, you have you like uh, experience point buffs that come from playing. Well, I guess you've those have already been applied to your character though. 
Yeah, I don't oh, okay. know how it's going to We'll find out. All right. Find out next month. <laughs> find out next month. Tune in. Be there or be squared or be there or be shadow keeps. I don't know. Let's Anyways, end let's hit this bread. <laughs>